Marvel at it all. Welcome to Primo Traveler. And on today's 10 Prime Picks, the most amazing places to visit in Malta. Be sure to watch till the end because you don't want to miss our top three spots. Malta is the world's 10th smallest country in terms of area. However, let's begin by setting the record straight. Malta is not an island or two, it's an archipelago of five islands. Only the two largest islands, Malta and Gozo, are regularly inhabited. The third biggest, Comino, features just one luxury resort. The remaining are uninhabited. But interestingly, Malta has been inhabited since approximately 5900 BC. That's way longer than many nations today and believe it or not, also way older than Apple AirPods. Its location, right smack in the center of the Mediterranean, placed it at the crossroads of major powers throughout the millennia. The Phoenicians and Carthaginians, Romans, Greeks, Arabs, Normans, Aragonese, Knights of St. John, French, and British took turns ruling the islands, which created a fascinating mixed heritage. There's also a distinct North African influence with a language derived from Arabic mixed with Italian. It is the legendary Knights of Malta who launched the Crusades to reclaim the Holy Land from the Seljuk Turks. But that's just one part of the history behind this palm tree filled landscape of lovely hilltop towns, laid back seaports, colorful old fishing villages, and natural attractions. Let's go on a tour of Malta and see 10 amazing places to visit when you're there. Number 10. Ganj Tufia Bay and Ganjna Bay Beaches Now my pronunciation is a little rough for some of these so just keep that in mind. But let's start off our list with a pair of nice warm beaches. Though not adjacent to each other, you can choose either of these beaches for your sun and sand needs. At Ganj Tufia Bay, enjoy an unspoiled beach surrounded by cliffs and sloping hillsides. Considered one of Malta's top beaches, it is favored for its quiet, laid-back ambiance. Nezhna Bay, on the other hand, features a gorgeous orange sand beach, where you can even water ski or paddle a canoe. Nearby are the ruins of Roman baths and ancient cart ruts, which intrigue scholars and visitors alike. Number 9. Hagar Kim Temples and Najra Temples this is a pair of prehistoric megalithic sites overlooking the Mediterranean Sea, just a stone's throw away from each other. The Hagar Kim temples date back to 3600 BC and were buried across the millennia until being rediscovered in 1839. Each temple was built as an individual place of worship, and the largest megalith of this 5,000-year-old site is more than 7 meters long and weighs approximately 20 tons aka just a little bit more than we weigh after five weeks of vacation food. How did they do it? Little boulders the size of bowling balls strewn across the site were probably used like casters to move the massive megaliths into place. Alongside the Najra temples is a complex composed of three different temples built a few hundred years apart from each other. The doorway of the South Temple is flanked by two immense blocks with small holes that mark the position of the rising sun on the equinoxes and the solstices. They were pretty smart. Number 8. Let's talk about the Blue Grotto. A winding cliffside road overlooking the Mediterranean Sea is your lead up to this spectacular nature site. With waters that shine a brilliant blue under the sun, sharply contrasted by limestone caves, it is a breathtaking view. According to the mythology, the Blue Grotto was home to the sirens or sea nymphs who captivated soldiers with their charms. You can take a guided boat tour in a brightly painted Maltese fishing boat called a Luzu and pass by six caves, including the Blue Grotto. You can also visit the village of Wide Is Zurich and hit its cliffside restaurants with marvelous views. Number 7. Blue Lagoon Found on the island of Comino, the Blue Lagoon is a mesmerizing sight with crystal clear turquoise waters washing over a white sand seabed. This lagoon feels like a giant swimming pool because the water is temperate, there are no waves, and the shallow end is safe enough even for children. 
If you're a good swimmer, you can cross to the cove and tiny beach on the other side. You can also take nature walks and hike across Camino Island or focus on the water with snorkeling and scuba diving. Number 6. Tarxian Temples Composed of four megalithic structures, the UNESCO-listed Tarxian Temples is the largest and best-preserved prehistoric site in all of Malta. Excavated in 1914, the site displays Malta's mysterious prehistoric culture during the late Neolithic period, more than 5,000 years ago. The stone walls of the four adjoining temples are decorated with surprisingly intricate spiral patterns and animal figures. The South Temple contains reliefs that depict goats, pigs, and a ram, as well as the unique statue of a fertility goddess. The East Temple has recognizable oracle holes, and the Central Temple has an arched roof that showcases technically advanced construction techniques, even all that time ago. Pretty amazing stuff. Number 5. The Hal Safliani Hypogeum the Hal Safliani Hypogeum was an underground cemetery during the Neolithic era and is a UNESCO World Heritage Landmark. Carved from limestone using rock tools, the interconnected chambers include passageways and stairways. Imagine how long it took them to carve this. That's true dedication right there. Dating back to 4000 BC, the beautiful carvings and paintings in red ochre were preserved excellently. It has provided archaeologists with discoveries about Neolithic culture and thinking. Some of the artifacts found here are now at the National Museum of Archaeology in Valletta, including unique clay sculptures, stone figures, and a rare prehistoric object that depicts a woman on what looks like a couch. Yeah, a couch. This is called the Sleeping Lady. Here's a primo tip though, you're definitely going to want to write this down. For the sake of conservation, the Hall Safliani Hypogeum has a limit of 10 visitors every hour, so make sure that you book ahead online. It'll make the visit a lot more convenient. Number 4. Let's talk about Rabat. Rabat is your first stop if you're going on a tour of the cities of Medina and Rabat, because they are somewhat considered to be a unified area. The word Rabat means suburb in Maltese. Visit architectural gems like Casa Bernard, a grand 16th century house that belonged to a noble Maltese family. The house is decorated with antique furniture, painted masterpieces, and other notable works of art. The Domus Romana Museum provides a glimpse of everyday life during the ancient Roman era, with exhibits that feature their fashion and cuisine. It was established on the ruins of a Roman aristocratic townhouse and contains some of the finest 1st century BC Roman mosaics in the entire world. Along with this is the Wingdia Court Museum, which displays a collection of ancient Roman artifacts as well as paintings by celebrated Maltese painter Mattia Preti and other European artists. Another landmark to see is the 17th century parish church of St. Paul's, which stands above St. Paul's Grotto, where it is said that St. Paul found refuge during his stay in Malta. And St. Dominic's Convent, an important pilgrimage destination dating back to the 15th century, contains a marble statue of the Virgin Mary that is considered miraculous. Number 3. Medina Medina is a fairy tale city. It's a fantastic medieval hilltop town that is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Steeped in history, even your first few steps are an experience, as you pass through the dramatic main gate to enter the city, giving the impression of walking back in time. It's a wild experience to go through. Once you've entered past the ancient ramparts, you're met with beautiful streets and old sandstone buildings. Visit St. Paul's Cathedral, a glorious Baroque building with a lavishly decorated sanctuary featuring a magnificent dome, marble columns, gilded details, gorgeous ceiling paintings, and a precious 12th century icon of the Madonna. There are also historic palaces like the Palazzo Vilhena, an 18th century magisterial palace with a facade inspired by Versailles. It now houses Malta's National Museum of Natural History, which displays exhibits such as prehistoric fossils. The Palazzo Fausan is an authentic medieval palace that preserved its original style from its glory years and showcases exquisite art, antiques, and ancient coins. It's a great collection. 
Number two, Gozo. Gozo, the second largest, is the most idyllic island in the Maltese archipelago. With its quiet towns and pristine beaches, the island is the perfect place to just sit calmly and unwind for a few days. The weather is perfect, and the small farms that cover the island's valleys and rolling hills offer such a relaxing sight. More traditional than the island of Malta, get to see the fortified medieval city of Victoria, the bustling seaside resort of Marsaforn, and the most important archaeological site of the Maltese islands, the temples mentioned earlier in our list. Even the minor towns here have grandiose Baroque churches to showcase. And if you want to take a dip, head down to Ramla Bay with its wide, sandy shore and gentle waters. And at number one, Valletta. The capital of the Republic of Malta, Valletta exudes elegance, reminiscent of the grandeur of the Knights of Malta, the European noblemen who were granted the Maltese islands by the King of Spain in 1530. And you'd be surprised to know that Valletta is the first ever planned city in Europe. The city was planned out back in 1565 during the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, as they set out to build a capital worthy of their aristocratic stature. And you'd see it in the city's grid plan, orderly public squares, and of course, grand architecture. Fronting the sea here are two harbors, the Grand Harbor and Marsamaxit Harbor. At the center is St. John's Coe Cathedral, a 16th century church built by the different orders of knights, hailing from countries such as France, Spain, and Italy. There is also the massive Grand Master's Palace, once the residence of the Knights of Malta. Filled with painted masterpieces, an armory, and an exhibit that tell the story of the Knights' military victories. Feel free to explore these and many other structures in the city that reek of history. Walking around is a breeze. And don't worry, the entire island has an efficient bus system, with Valletta as its hub. If you get hungry, how about some food you can only find in Malta? Grab a delicious pasitizi a phyllo pastry baked with ricotta cheese or mushy peas. Then freshen up with a can of kini, a soda that uses quinoto bitter oranges, spices, and herbs unique to this region. Definitely something you can't miss. So these are the 10 most amazing places to visit in Malta. What was your favorite from today's video? Let me know down in the comments below right now. And also check out this other video from Primo Traveler. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our 10 prime picks. And let Primo Traveler be your guide to premier destinations around the world.